Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition Solo Runs. Last time we had a couple of encounters over in the Blighted Village, and now we are coming back to drop off a bunch of the stuff that we've picked up. I've gone through and marked all the scrolls that we can't cast as wares so that we can sell those off for profit. And doing that, we should have a reasonable amount of cash. And so I might just double check to see if there's any gear that we want that is better than what we have. Although it's unlikely, I'm sure, at this point. Let's we'll say hello to our favorite mate, Aaron. Need anything else? Trading, good sir. Right, so. Get rid of wares. 1,170 gold pieces. Well, he has the cash for that, which is nice. We don't want any of these magic items. We could probably get some extra arrows. That wouldn't be terrible. But thankfully we can get rid of a bunch of the extra weight. Um, this is 1d8 finesse. This is 1d6 finesse, so we'll trade that one off as well. And we have two fire arrows at the moment. He does have most of the standard arrows spoken for. But rather than shopping for those right now, I'm going to take a quick hop over to the blacksmith just to check if they have anything we want. Right, anything extra fancy here? Looking for steel? I have, well, something close. Let's have a quick butcher's. A lot of this will be stuff that we've sold back to them, I'm sure. So this is 15 AC. This is the Oak Father's Embrace. Plus one short bow is not going to outdo a plus one like crossbow. Big, scary, deadly weapons. More arrows. The arrows of knockback could be really good against creatures on cliffs or high second story buildings all that kind of stuff and so that might be something for our repertoire that we don't really have apart from shove but we do not have a strong strength stat for that so do we want so much money I'll pick up one for emergencies don't think we need darkness. Alright. One of those for me, please, sir. And with that... Are we out of spell slots? We are. We are out of short rests. We do have all our health. But that's not really the most ideal place to be. Just having all your health and no other main resources but the question then becomes after we long rest and get our spell slots back another time what are we going to do next where are we going to go who are we going to fight because we still have 1133 xp needed to get to the level cap of four which is going to be really good when we do get there I'm just not sure what quests we can go about Shit. completing now. Where are my boots? Well, we can deal with the Coblin Sazer over here. That's something we can do very quickly. Let's get ourselves an emergency friend. Let's get a crow. Hey there, crow. Hello. Put it down. She can't fight. That's the point. She didn't kill your brother, Ark. Shoot before you lose your nerve, Tiefling. Right. What if do we want to do here? To we can't recruit Saza. We know that that doesn't help us be because kill me. recruiting I'm adds a member to our party. Here it comes. Alright, well, apparently no XP for us in that. These are empty. Apparently
Apparently people don't want me touching this person's corpse. Even though their pockets are empty. Sure. There is an encounter behind... Oh, where is it? There's a door back here, isn't there? Or is it this gap that I'm unable to currently see through? Um, but there's lots of big, scary traps in there that I don't trust myself not to get into trouble with. We're not going to fight the harpies yet. So I think right now we're going to take yet another long rest. So to do that, we need the portal outside. Just outside the main gates here. Is it right here on the left? Yes, there it is. Ancient Rune Circle. So this will let us go back to camp once more. We have enough like potatoes and grilled meat and stuff to justify another long rest. So go to camp and day. Yes, please. I wonder if we'll be visited by strange voices in the night again. There's the woofer. Not a member of our party, but uh, just around. So, water. Seven. Throw one of those off in a direction that doesn't matter. So that's our water for our long rest as ever. And these ribs look good. Are they the heaviest thing? Yeah. Ribs and a potato. And let's have a spoiled treacle tart. Seems like a good dinner to me. Off to bed we go. Where are you? There's the strange voices. And we've got no arms. Also interesting that as a drow, we were sleeping in that segment rather than sitting up and meditating with our elven ancestry. Nevertheless, we have XP to get and places to go. I'm thinking that with our really good archery and our spells, I think we could at least get rid of the first couple of ettins and spiders down in the place underneath the blacksmith's home. So let's head over there. And since our prior conversations with the goblins, we shouldn't have any issues coming in through this front gate. Although I think we killed the ones that were watching this gate. So yeah, not a problem for us. Hopping in through here. And we'll be using the entrance at the cracked wall to come through here. There is still a bunch of loot and stuff in this room. Various weapons and tools and stuff but i'm just gonna leave it on the ground we've got plenty of cash and nothing to be buying at the moment so let's get through here without clipping into the walls and we are presented with this spider web so when we touch this spider web we will have to make a dexterity saving throw against being constrained by it and you might see a big ring that goes noticing the uh or other creatures noticing our presence in that web so let's see how this goes all right we succeeded that save and that one this is what we get for having a really high dex and there you go there's the big strange sound i would like to retreat off of this webbing so that we're stood on regular ground and see if foes are going to crawl up this corridor here. Doesn't seem like anything's coming up immediately. Let's see if we can ping this system once more. Which we're obviously really good at because our dexterity is really high and our dexterity saving throw is even higher because I think we're proficient in those are we proficient in those? That's my character sheet. Dexterity. Where's our saving throws? Ranger 1. Dexterity saves and strength saves. So, yes. We have plus 5 to our dexterity saving throws. There's two things going screech in the background. Get off the webs, please. 
And we did not quite get to turn-based mode before they came in, but that's fine. We are going to hop off of this. And what I really want to do is burn down this webbing. Now, I didn't think about how I was going to do that first. Here's a question. Can I dip my weapon on this torch? Absolutely can. All right. So the question becomes, do we attack them first, or do we attack the webbing and protect ourselves? I think that's a fairly obvious choice. So now those creatures cannot reach us, which is great. So we have two etacaps. I think I said etins when we came in here. I meant etacaps, of course. Etins being great big two-headed creatures. And they should be close enough that we can horde breaker. And getting the extra fire damage in as well is wonderful. So these two should go down fairly easily. They can spit um, webs at us, I think. But otherwise, they are just destined to stand there. Which is good going for us. So... In a manner, the Horde Breaker has kind of given us the level 5 feature of multi-attack. Obviously, the two creatures have to be stood next to each other, but I'm certainly grateful for it. There goes our flame being extinguished, but that's fine. And one or two more turns, and that should be a very easy pair of kills didn't even rock out the hunter's mark for this, which I probably could have because we would have maintained concentration after this fight. But we can finish as we've started. So that's two of those guys. That's 25 XP a piece, which is great. Now, getting over to that gap there might cause us some issues. We cannot jump that far. We've just stood in the remnants of the webbing here. I don't know if that's going to attract actual spiders along this corridor. But there is, of course, an alternate way into this space without having to cross this bridge. So, oh, the webbing we were in was the stuff that they threw at us. Okay. So, let's take a lit torch. That's going to be our friend. And it's quite handy that if we now equip that... Uh, where are you, Torch? So we have a 1d4 bludgeoning, 1d4 fire main attack. We have no bonus to that because it's a strength weapon rather than a finesse weapon using dex. But we can pull in our sword down here. And we should be able to swap between them very quickly. Alright, they've decided that that is where those two things are going to lock in on the taskbar. So, that path is a bust. However, if we come around to the main entranceway again, we can climb on this box here, and from there we should be able to hop up to this gap. Of course, always check the skeleton for interesting stuff. And I'm not really sure what good sneaking does us when we're holding a lit torch, if I'm honest. Let's get our sword back. And somewhere in here, there's a couple of phase spiders. There is the well bucket that can be used as an emergency escape from this place. It never really occurred to me that you could jump from here down there if you absolutely had to. Although, I don't know that the full damage would be kind to us in that situation. So what we want to do is, not this path here, but I think that path there contains a 
dead scientist who has boots of um, not getting ever in webbed. So I wonder if we get what's Dragon's the strongest creature, the strongest familiar. Maybe the spider or the crab. As long as the spiders don't suddenly chase after us. Uh, crab, let me see your character sheet, please. Strength two. All right, so it's not the crab. Unless this is going to be a trend for all of the familiars. Uh, find familiar. Let's see what the spider's got going on. Six. Six is less bad. And presumably... They have passive spider walk. So, this spider can actually cross these webs without issue. Which is quite nice. And if we hop down here. Can we not jump? Oh, let's hide. It's me being daft. Alright, so we can't... grab anything out of the satchels and stuff. But we can hop our way around. The only problem is, the boots that we want are, I believe, on this corpse and we can't throw the corpse around, which is a shame. Like, we could throw a cleaver back to ourselves if we wanted to. Journals papers, heavy chests. So we are going to have to make the trip here ourselves on foot, which is fine. But we can do some light scouting with our summoned friend. And if we stop sneaking, we can do it even faster. Alright, so we've got one phase spider there, and another phase spider there. Clearly, they do not like phase spiders. <laughs> or non-phase spiders, as it were. So how are we going to get down there safely? Because I'd rather get the boots first, but perhaps we're not going to have such a luxury. Where do they go? And just teleport away into the ether. And there's one. 27 HP is quite a lot. We do have two potions of haste left. They will allow us... Uh, let's do a gentle, gentle hop down here. We took four damage and fell over, but were not detected. Uh, these will give us increased speed and two actions. So if we have to, like we have before, we can use that speed and action to dash and escape. But for now, we're going to see what we can do trying to carefully move around these two spiders. Now we've lost 4 HP. Does 4 HP warrant a short rest? Because with our current feature set, we don't get anything else out of a short rest apart from the HP. This is not smart. I should not be spending this time looting. But hey, Alchemist's Fire and all these webs might do us some good. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. And we're not dead. Yet. Alright, I don't care about any of these things. That is a cragged rock that we can climb if we wish to. And this is the corpse we were looking for. Spider step boots, immune to being in webbed. We will equip those immediately. And odds are probably just keep those on for the remainder of the campaign. Apart from 
like maybe some boots that grant plus one to athletics or something. I can't think of any other shoes that are going to give us any benefit. So, lots of books and stuff. Let's see if we can get anything valuable here. Stones and gold. We'll take the spider diagrams and ritually stuff. That's fine by me. Wicker chest got spell scrolls. Does indeed. Entangle is... Is that a spell we can cast? Seems quite rangery, or it might be druidy. But hey, who knows. Right. Don't think we want to be jumping down there. So what I would like to do is try and get the two face spiders that are over here near... Oh my god, so much water. Try and get them near the rope that takes you up to the well upstairs. Because then we have a really convenient escape if we need it. However, it's quite far around that way. And the spiders are not in that direction. There's one there. And what we would like to do is if we drop this torch. That's not torch, that's just remove from inventory. If we drop this, hopefully it doesn't cause us to be seen immediately. But now we can dip our bow and shoot any of the spider webs that they teleport to. Because that is going to enable us to cause fall damage for them. So, join me next time and we'll see about killing off these spiders and whether we're going to succeed in that or end up doing a very hasty retreat. Thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider hitting that subscribe button or pressing that like button. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you're having a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.